that maximizing profit, that's the American dream, making money. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, and I refuse to do it off the backs of people that are struggling to survive and plan for their future and put the insurance policies in place, real insurance policies. And I will not. I, I will not sell my soul for one grain of silver or gold. I just refuse to do it. And Robbie knows why we started the gold and silver business, because as he said, he knows where the bodies are buried. He knows how these guys operate, and, and it, it is just, well, I, I just didn't it's talk some about it. It's some intelligence. Look, the coin, a coin broker is no different to a stockbroker. It's the same mentality. When you're in a room with 50 guys all doing the same thing, um, it becomes an ego thing. You know, you've got a big board up there with the production on. You don't want to be at the bottom of that board just for self-esteem purposes. You want to be you want to be amongst the big hitters at the top of the board. And, and understand the way it works. And Robbie, you know this. The broker gets six to eight percent off the deal. The house gets the rest. So this guy is trying to maximize his weekly paycheck. Sure. So he's going to go in there and sell everything that he can to you. And, with, the, and with the highest margin. With, with the highest margin. Sure. That's the way it works. That's why we do. And, and the reason why Republic Trading Group was created, because I got tired of talking about the gold and silver whores, and I set a new standard in the industry, and a lot of them are aware of us, Robbie, and they don't like us because we tell the truth. They don't like it. We've spoiled their enriching, you know, vehicle. We, 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 we put a hole in it. And, and I'm sorry for that, but the reason why people are doing this is they're trying to survive. All things being equal, I'd, I'd love to run my own company making widgets, making good profit, a product people will buy. You know, I get my vacation in Hawaii every year, you know, and everything's hunky-dory. But the, the circumstances are not that the these are not normal times and i refuse to take advantage of people's fear and their insecurity i won't sell my soul now I'm, I'm i'm through with these people at any rate let's go back to the phones here enough of my pontificating jack in minnesota hello jack i'm sorry he was just done well excuse me boy this has been a weird day <laughs> ken we've been about a half a step <laughs> Ken, uh, who's breathing into their mouthpiece? That's Bob. Bob, you're breathing. You're breathing into your mouthpiece. No, it's not me. Okay. <laughs> it's not me. I'm and, not breathing. Hi, this is Ken from Emporia. All I, this, all I can do is from Scott Seal is here, hot air. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bob, say say hi to Ken in uh, Kansas there. Hey, Ken in Kansas, what's up today? So, hey, I'm real surprised that this Bob Dole came out uh trying to get this health care bill through, and then I did a little research, and I found out that he was a lobbyist for these big uh, <laughs> uh, big drug companies. So that's what the one uh, bandit did when he got out of public office, huh? He became, well, uh, yeah. I, I think that's what happens when you use too much Viagra, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but they all do. You know, usually you have a heart attack. But uh, You, know, you have I, to have I, a heart I, to do that. Well, I tell you, I don't want to single out any of these Kansas congressmen, but I called in on the radio show a while back, and I asked this congressman from Kansas, I said, have you ever heard of the president's plunge team? Have you ever heard about the government trying to suppress the price of gold? And he acted like he didn't know either one of them. I, I was really amazed. Oh, wow, really? Who yeah. was that, Sam Brownback? No, no. Oh. Well, and that first name starts with Jerry. Well, hey, uh, Carrie Jerry Moran. Oh, well, okay, okay. We finally got the name. It's okay. They're public figures. We can slam them, thank them, you know, whatever. But they're public figures. You can say their names. Well, he's done a lot of good for Kansas. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I was surprised that he acted like he didn't know anything about it. I couldn't hardly believe it. Well, I mean, isn't isn't the very essence of being a politician is to be blissfully ignorant on some subjects? So you, <laughs> I guess so, so. So you don't look bad. Yeah. Right. I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you I really one thing, they want to get on the air with me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> i tell you what, I really appreciate calling in and you're not screening the call or ask what I talk about, uh, and I'll call again. And thank, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ken, I appreciate it. Yeah, we're live. Uh, we work on the high wire every day here. Um, by the way, I wanted to mention something to you, Mr. Chapman and Robbie. Uh, this is the first time that I've seen this. 
Um, and I'm on Kitco right now, and I'm looking at the United States dollar. Absolutely flat today, 75.50. Didn't drop, didn't go up. This is the first time I've seen this, Bob. Not as high well, it today. all depends on what month you're looking at, too. Yeah. Uh, today? Yeah, no, dollar was higher today. It was, uh, look, it was early this morning. It, it, uh, it, uh, before the CPI figures came out, uh, it was hanging at 75. So closing at 75.51, it climbed 51 basis points. Well, then why, then why does the graph say 0. Well, 0.00? Kitco. It's Canadian. Man. Well, hey, careful now. Well, wait a minute careful. now. <laughs> Kitco uh, very often has incorrect information. And uh, they are, and I don't know how this is reconciled, they are actually and have been for a long time very anti-gold and anti-silver. Strange for a company that sells it, but that's right. You would think that the government was telling them what to do, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I mean, if you read Jay Nadler's columns, I mean, they all unbelievable. <coughs> they all negative. I mean, you think he he worked for uh, the Treasury Department? Yes, maybe he does. Maybe he does. At any rate, um, Chris, I lost my screen again. I'm sorry. Who? Would... Jim in Florida. <laughs> Hello. Jim. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I have a, a question for Bob. Um, a couple of weeks ago, he was sort of predicting a possible bank holiday coming up at the end of this month or sometime in the near future and a devaluation of our currency. Does he still feel that way? Yeah, but I think it's uh, some time off here. Uh, my time frame is anyone be anywhere between one and three years, and I think one and a half to two years is probably the time frame. So that would put us halfway through uh, 12, uh, 2011 to, 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 to 2012. And at that time, I think the, the hyperinflation could very well have been over, and the, the system could have been spinning, could be spinning out of control. And I think by that time, uh, if not before that, the dollar would be somewhere between 40 and 55 on the USDX. And then I thought that if that happens, there will be another meeting like Smithsonian in the early 70s, uh, um, the Plaza Accord of 75, the Louvre Accord of 77. They all get together, these nations, and they revalue and devalue all the currencies and they default on two-thirds of the debt. At the same time, I think the U.S. would use that opportunity because they'll no longer be a reserve currency, and I'll tell you in a minute why, uh, that they would de devalue the dollar by, uh, if you have give the government three old dollars, they'll give you one new one. In other words, the dollar would lose two-thirds of its value, and rightly so. At the same time, I see a G20 uh, international unit made up of those currencies, including the dollar, uh, with a backing of 10 to 15 percent of gold to make it acceptable. And that, of course, would send some nations into the market to buy gold because they don't have any or they don't have enough. And so that's what I think could happen at that time, and it's not now. It's sometime in the future, and if I have to guess, it's one to two years from now. Okay, well, if if that happens, like, let's say, one and a half or two years, the price of gold by that time is going to be astronomical. Yes, it will. That's yeah. why we're telling people well, to buy it now. Just, just look at the figures uh, from um, uh, from John Williams, and uh, his figure was um, 7,150, if I think I'm right. Yep. And mine is 6,700. And again, we're close together. And uh, it's interpretation, of course, but we're close. Uh, he's 21.4 percent on real unemployment. I'm 21.3. That's okay. In fact, he's better at it than I am, so I take his figure. Uh, That's a given. I mean, this this is his specialty in those kinds of statistics. We're running I out do of time. them, but I'm sorry, gentlemen. We're running out of time, and oh. I... Yeah, but it's fastest two hours in radio. Uh, Robbie, one more time on the French roosters there. 
Uh, pristine <coughs> coins, ladies and gentlemen, pristine. Brilliant uncirculated uh, French roosters. Uh, it's a fifth of an ounce, 0.1867 ounces of pure gold, $245. Order 20 or more, 4900 bucks. Receive a in free international forecast over an extension and a fine ceramic mug courtesy of RBN by calling 1-800-691-7898, but in an hour from now. In an hour, because Robbie is next up on the flip side, and his website is eaglesup.com. And, Bob, your email and uh, your site. TheInternationalForecaster.com. International TheInternationalForecaster.com. Email Bob, B-O-B, at I-N-T, F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R.com. Bob at IntForecaster.com. I thank you so much for your time, and happy belated birthday, sir, and I will see you next Tuesday. You surely will.